Lightning, followed by booming thunder, crashed from the thick rolling clouds above the hidden fjord and echoed off the low mountains surrounding the pirate brigandine Shailene's pleasure. The deafening noise bombarded the ship's watch. They hunched with every strike and cursed in fear. The night was black as a whore's heart, and the only light came from the glow of the white-hot lightning, reflecting off the black, oily waters of the fjord. Two watchmen huddled together, bent in stinking, superstitious fear. The night seemed to them abnormally dark. Thick clouds absorbed the light as soon as a storm bolt fell from the skies. Night's as black as a whore's heart it is, said one. Like there's something out there, waiting for us to slip up, to step wrong, eh? I ain't never seen a night dark like this. Even with this weird storm, ain't normal. Why don't you shut your gob, you, said the other, tired of the grating nervousness of his partner, whom he loathed in the first place. You're lily-livered and yellowed as a bastard cat. I ain't all in on the captain wanting to stop here, on account of all the stories he's been told. It's bad enough listening to those two down there in the brig go on and on. I gotta listen to you, too. He jerked his head towards the large grate over the brig. The first watchman fumed silently for a moment. Don't like what I say, eh? No, I don't. The first pulled a short double-bladed sword from his belt. Well then, what are you gonna do about it, big boy? I reckon I'll gut you like a fish, even it's all the same to you. Their blades met with a ring of steel. Down below, in the brig, two prisoners argued. Another fine mess you've gotten us into, Hana said. Mess? What mess? We've got them right where we want them. I see no reason for hostility, said Ufgar. Where we want them? Are you mad or just stupid? We're on a boat, in the water, locked in the brig and isolated from any and all. I fail to see how this is to our advantage. Hana, my boon companion, please vent your spleen elsewhere. Everything is going according to plan. I have no recollection of a plan at all, my dear Ulfgar, much less the one that is unfolding at present. You cannot stomach your liquor at all, can you? We discussed this assignment in length in the Moody Mare with Kasuban less a fortnight ago. Shh, you great oaf, something's happening topside. By the seer, I swear, if you great oaf me one more time. Shush! There was a great commotion above, and the ringing of steel on steel. With a great crashing din, the great above splintered, and two watchmen smashed through, landing heavily on the lower deck. Hana and Ulfgar dove to safety and watched the bloody pirates wrestling on the floor. In an instant, the two friends rushed in, grabbed up the fallen blades, and finished the guards before they could recover. As I said, Hana, right where we want them. The small man rolled his eyes. Up? Yes? The big man nodded, locked his fingers together, and as Hana planted a foot into his meaty hands, tossed the smaller man up and out of the splintered hatch. Hana rolled with practiced ease and sprang to his feet, sword at the ready. Only the constant flash of lightning and crash of thunder met his senses. Then, something else. Hana, my great friend, a rope down, if you please, came Ulfgar's deep, resonant voice. Hana crouched and was silent, trying to listen beyond the storm. Hana, a hand now! You know I cannot make that leap! Hana squinted, trying to listen. Something was in the waters around the ship. He cringed as Ulfgar bellowed from below. You little son of a- Silence, Ulf! Something's afoot! I don't care if the Grand Vizier himself has risen from the dead, seeking our heads in revenge! Get me out of here! Ulfgar raged. There was a thud 
and the ship lurched 